Sewage Drunk. Lately, I've been going over the work of Tango Project, the small team tasked with giving new life to old Natsume games like Wild Guns and Pocky and Rocky, and here we have Ninja Saviors Return of the Warriors, titled Ninja Warriors once again in Japan, and this is the modern remake of Ninja Warriors for Super Nintendo. The original game is very good, it's a 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up that featured three different characters with unique movesets. Ninja Saviors takes everything the original game did and made it that much better. Now there's five characters to choose from, all with their own skill sets, plus the graphics are redrawn and refitted for modern displays, and there's now a two-player cooperative mode. So, in other words, it's pretty much exactly what you'd want from a modern remake of a game like Ninja Warriors. I do want to point out, though, there's more than meets the eye with Ninja Saviors. This is much more than just a graphical overhaul. Each of the five characters all play differently and require different approaches, so this isn't just a walk-to-the-right-and-punch kind of a game. The original three characters are here, of course. There's Kunoishi, a quick and agile fighter equipped with knives and a katana blade. There's Ninja, a big and slow but very strong character that can do some serious damage using grappling moves. There's Kamaitachi, the fastest character with scythes for arms and some nice looking hagger slacks to match. I always refer to him as the well-dressed robot. The two new characters are Yaksha and Raiden. Yaksha is an unusual character in that she's small and slow, but she has mechanical arms that come out of her back that are capable of all sorts of different moves. Raiden is a gigantic mech that can transform between two different forms, and I mean, come on, you're basically a boss character, how freaking cool is this? Yeah, you're really slow and susceptible to damage, but so what? You gotta love how these guys try and come at a giant robot with a friggin' knife. Yeah, good luck with that, guys. Oh, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that all five characters are androids, but that doesn't stop them from somehow having jiggle physics. Hey, priorities, man. Since the action takes place on a strict 2D plane, that allows for special move inputs that you'd usually see in fighting games. Like the well-dressed robot here, he can do a corkscrew attack by pressing up and attack in mid-air and follow that up with a buzzsaw move on his way down. The game also gives each character a few different options to finish off their regular attacks. Usually in beat-em-ups like Final Fight, for example, you just run through the same punch sequence over and over. But in Ninja Saviors, after you hit three attacks in a row, you can hold either up or down during the fourth attack to do something a little extra, like the well-dressed robot firing off spikes out of his spine, or simply grabbing someone to do a front kick and create some space. Bear in mind with some of these attacks, they'll use up a bit of your battery meter, and feel free to take advantage of this often, because it charges up on its own as long as you don't take damage. And when it's maxed out, you can do a full screen attack. One big highlight of this game is the difficulty balancing. On the surface, there's not usually much substance with a game like this, but if you want to finish this game with any of the five characters, you gotta learn their moves, and you gotta get comfortable with their range of motion. One easy example is Raiden. Yeah, it seems easy to just roll right through this game since you're a giant robot, but there are some boss fights that will give you a lot of trouble if you don't know what you're doing. The same could be said for the other characters, too. You have to lean into their strengths, whether it's quickness, grappling moves, aerial moves, or having mechanical tentacles coming out of your shoulder blades. All five have their own strats to learn, like Raiden against this quicker boss here. If you stay in this form, you're not gonna last long, he's just too fast. Instead, you're better off switching to blaster mode when the opportunity strikes so you can keep your distance from this guy and avoid most of his strongest attacks. If you're playing as Ninja, you might be better off blocking and waiting for a chance to grapple so you can just toss the guy into the air and start a juggle sequence. There's a great rhythm and flow to this game once you get going, no matter which character you pick. Ninja Saviors is also full of great touches that take this beyond a mere remake, like right away in the first level, you can pick up bikes and toss them at enemies, but I love how the game makes sure to show off how heavy these things are. It takes a second to pick them up, and when they land, you really feel it. And yeah, of course it goes without saying that the graphics here are spectacular, same as the other Tango Project games, and the music, of course, sounds great too. So yeah, remakes like Ninja Saviors Return of the Warriors always have me scrambling to Wikipedia to see what other games they could potentially work on. Their next project is to be released this summer, Shadow of the Ninja Reborn. That's a day one purchase for me. But Natsume has plenty of other games that could get a similar treatment. There's other NES games like Power Blade, Shatterhand, and Abadox, while the Super Nintendo could potentially offer a host of imported games based on manga like Ghost Sweeper Mikami, as well as titles like Spanky's Quest and Power Rangers Fighting Edition. Whatever it is that Tango Project decides to do next, I am there. 
Ninja Saviors gets the highest recommendation for me, and it's available on Switch, PS4, and PC, so check it out any way you can. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.